the beautiful girl narrated the journey of her acting career at the interview. She started off as a child actress who wanted to be known for more than a pretty face and as a talented actress instead. She walked away of playing different roles and ended up an accomplished talent. Although she quite enjoyed her time on the screen, there was one thing she wasn't quite confident in, variety shows. She considered those to be more trying than acting movies. After the interview, exhausted, she was ready to head home but her manager never sleep confessed she had been signed up for a variety show without her knowledge, the BFF special. He knew she wouldn't like it but tried to play it off as an opportunity to diversify, ending him a stone cold glare. But it was misdirected aggression. The CEO of her talent agency was the one who made the choice after all. But the real shock was yet to come. Her partner for the show was none other than the sexy playboy god of the entertainment industry, Sobo Me. Was she shocked? Beyond shocked, I tell you. But she told her manager to decline the role. She wasn't interested in playing in a variety show, not stuck of playing a show with that Bumi. Meanwhile, Bumi, the god of sexiness, who just completed a shoot, angrily kicked down the set's decoration. The environment was not conducive enough for him and his sexy buddy. Angrily calling for a break, he walked off, leaving a trail of fear and gossip behind him. In his dressing room, while he sat getting touched up, his manager ran to him to inform him of the BFF special variety show. His manager was excited, hoping he would agree with the show. Goon's name made him recall a distant memory, and whatever the new memory was, was enough for him to weirdly smack in anticipation of this new journey. At the set of her movie, Goon walked in, cheered on by fans and welcomed by the staff. She respectfully greeted her son Bay, receiving a warm welcome. But in addition to that welcome, she received the news that articles about her being best friends with Bumi had been released. A shockingly interesting surprise for those who saw it. Yeah, she definitely didn't see that coming. She was sure she declined the show, so she looked to her manager for answers. Manager, fearing for his life, offered her his phone, and yeah, there they were. Articles about how Bumi were circulating the internet at an alarming speed, as these things often do. And as if the universe was working against her, Bumi appeared on set right at that moment, grabbing the attention of all. He looked around for her, his face lighting up the moment he spotted her as he excitedly called out to her. She could not believe her eyes. But with folks on set already talking, she got into character real quick, even though she didn't understand why he came in the first place. Claims to have been shooting nearby and decided to stop by to see his best friend since the friendship had been exposed. But Goon felt things were better when they were on the wraps. After all, without the article, nobody would have guessed in a million years they were friends. Can you smell the passive aggressiveness? But Bumi was excited. Now that it was out in the open, they could see each other whenever. His responses were ticking her off by the second. So she grabbed his tie, yanking him close, warning him off that she had no intention of being his friend. Whether it was in the past, present, or future. But the thing was, neither did Bumi. He pulled her clothes using his finger to brush just below the lips, as if to make his points very clear. I don't want to be friends with you either. They were speaking the same words, but they were on totally different pages. He released her slowly, brushing her hair behind her ears, resulting in an involuntary blush on her cheeks. Before she could properly call him to order, in came the director. Putting aside their personal discomforts, they welcomed him with the best smile they could muster given the situation. Must be hard being a celebrity. The director commented on how well they seemed to get along, referring to that pose Gona had struck with Bumi earlier when she yanked his tie. What were you expecting? Bumi admitted to having a strong relationship with her. He readied himself to depart to resume his shoot. Music to Goon's ears, she had about had it with him. But not before he pulled a stun Goon to his side, asking the staff that they please take care of his little Goon. He was messing with her and she knew it, but he only smirked, asking they get along well going forward as the best friends they are. After the shoot, she headed straight for her agency, Namu. In his office, the CEO spoke to the producer of the BFF special. He had secured the talents requested and all that was left was to start the show for the bang. But the only bang that was taking place was his door as Goon barged into his office in anger. She was pissed pissed and even the CEO knew to tremble in fear. She angrily asked why articles were being sent out even though she had clearly rejected the offer. He tried to calm her down offering her some tea first, but that wasn't even close to calming her down. She was adamant about not doing the show, especially not with Bumi. No really, what did she have against the dude? He was faced with a brick wall, so he tried to appeal to her humanity. He owed the producer a lot, and she was trying to make a comeback. So when she asked for her and Bumi, he couldn't say no. And while they were both top stars and had worked hard to get there, the company did help them get to the point they were. His plan was backfiring because all she saw was him trying to abuse his authority over her. He changed his tactics, trying to convince her that Bumi wasn't as bad as everyone thought, but she wasn't going to sit listening to his nonsense. She stood up angrily, still refusing to do the show and walking out, but not before informing him that she'd be taking the incident into consideration when it was time to renew her contract. <laughs> he was about to lose one of his top stars. Jumping into damage control, he decided to compromise. She had wanted to do a show secret message to take her acting career in a new direction. But she pointed out he had declined her proposal using her schedule and the lack of marketability as an excuse. But that was before. He hastily searched for the script, dropping it in front of her. He would let her do the show, but only if she filmed the BFF special. 
compromise is the art of negotiation. She walked out of the room holding her script in hand. She had gained something, but damn, shooting with Bumi was one hell of a price to pay. On her way out, she bumped into said Bumi. Divya smile, he teased, calling her his BFF. For some reason, they keep running into each other recently. Startled, she accused him of listening on her conversation with the CEO, but he assured her the walls were soundproof. But his interest was piqued in what secret she must have been discussing, wondering if she was maybe dating the CEO. She was halfway through exploding before calming herself down. There was no point in trying to talk to him. Her lack of reaction disappointed him. Wasn't she even a little bit curious as to why he was there? But she didn't care. She claimed to have zero interest in him before storming off. The CEO must have been out of his mind. He wasn't as bad as the rumors. Nah, he was worse. Her dislike for him had only gotten worse. But that devious sexy specimen was having fun with the whole situation. The CEO laid on the sofa thinking he could take a break, but that was before Bumi walked in. Asking him to make himself comfortable, he mentioned in passing that Goon was there and Bumi said he knew. I know. He had met her on his way in. He seemed like he was having fun and that was never a good thing. Every time he had fun, the CEO certainly didn't. He hoped Bumi hadn't caused trouble again, but Bumi laughed that off. After all, it was him who had caused trouble treating his actors anyhow, anyhow. He was sweating under the pressure. He started to cry his case to Bumi but was cut off mid-sentence by Bumi agreeing to do the show, which came as a shock. He was willing to do the BFF special on the condition that he convinced Goon to take part in it. A once again exhausted Goon was dropped off at her apartment complex by her manager. She walked in looking at her script before noticing an envelope at her front door addressed to her. Assuming it was from a fan, she opened it wondering how they knew her address. I was beyond shocked to find her face attached to a half-naked woman. The next morning, her manager came to pick her up. He noticed her solid mood and when he asked, she contemplated telling him about the pictures but decided against doing it at that time. He probably already had a lot on his plate since it was the first day of the shoot. Opting to tell him at the end of her schedule for the day, she hid the pictures and headed for the shoot. Arriving, she asked the heading before her as she needed some time to get ready. He went in greeting the crew folk and she sat wondering if she really would be able to pull off acting like best friends with Bumi, especially after last night. She wasn't feeling very uppity, but she shook the thoughts away. Her only option was to focus on work. Meanwhile, in Bumi's van, he was getting a call from an idol he had followed on social media. It was a common occurrence. He showed a little attention and their imagination skyrocketed. His manager mentioned he was making headlines with another dating scandal. But Bumi figured he would have been used to this by now. But the manager was also worried about Goon. Now that she was entangled with him, her image was also on the line. But Bumi rightly pointed out they were only masquerading as best friends, though her diehard fans might be incapable of telling the difference. The manager added that if he kept this up, he might get another call from the CEO. But before he could finish, he ended himself a stone cold glare from Bumi, effectively silencing him. Looks like whoever the CEO is is taboo where Bumi is concerned. He apologized for offending him and Bumi opted to take a quick nap, leaving the restless manager to reflect on his actions. But that was before he mentioned Goon was already on set. All of a sudden, sleep didn't sound so appealing anymore. Goon, who had gathered enough mental momentum, headed to the set to greet the crew folk and was welcomed. They teased her for showing off her friendship with Bumi by coming to the set together. Bumi walking up behind her, claiming they couldn't live without each other. She played along while the crew members stood in trance, being in the presence of the usually far, far away Bumi. While Bumi and Goon went to receive the run on the shoot for the day, their managers made nice with each other. Bumi's manager, understanding if Goon's was worried for her because of Bumi's less than palatable character, and Goon's manager assuring him Goon could be just as temperamental too, which made him worry about what would happen if they had a fight on set, a valid concern. Starting off the shoot, Goon sat in the coffee shop awaiting Bumi, who walked in seconds later complimenting her on how pretty she looked. She called him cheesy and pointed out he looked pretty decent too, which Bumi considered necessary if he was coming to see her. Not your flirting. Things were moving smoothly and those behind the camera were more than pleased. Moving on to other drinks, Goon was about to give her order when Bumi decided to order for her. A show of their friendship. Goon could smell he had something up his sleeves even before he ordered her an Americano with three shots, asking him to make it really strong. Even the barista shocked. Goon's manager worried for her and Bumi's manager just could not believe his artist. Goon still in character smiled affectionately. He knew what she liked. And before he could order, she also opted to order for him, ordering a red bean latte for him with an innocent smile. What even is that? Payback Haiki is a bitch. Again, the barista shock, probably thinking, what kind of weird taste do you all have? But Goon assured him that Bumi had a unique taste and would absolutely love it. It was his turn to stick to character and suck it up. While the two of them were silently at each other's throats, the crew couldn't be happier with the chemistry between their leads. With their drinks now ready and in front of them, they each took sips. Both falling into despair immediately they swallowed. Luckily for them, they had an audio problem at that moment, so they took five. 
Now finally free from their characters, they silently bickered. Bomi wondering how the hell she came up with red bean latte and Gon calling him out for choosing a ridiculously bitter drink on purpose. The two leads sort of strangling each other gave off the vibes of two close friends having a great time. The producers were sure they were onto something good. Damn, they do look picture perfect, not even gonna lie. After the shoot, Goon sipped on the sweet coffee her manager had gotten her to cleanse her from the hell Bumi had put her through. He was simply evil and had zero redeeming qualities. Hatred is still a form of love, her manager said, but he had gone and taken the joke a little bit too far. She thanked him for dropping off and headed inside, not noticing the envelope that had fallen on her way out, which her manager saw after she stepped out. Before she could make it inside, he called out to her, running after her. He asked her what happened, showing her the pictures. She finally let on she had seen it at her door when she got back from work. He wasn't happy with the fact that she didn't tell him immediately, and while he started to rebuke her for that, a security guard walked by greeting Goon, but her manager was in attack mode. After he had been told the security was tight, they were severely lacking. The guard tried to explain they conducted patrols often, but his explanation was lacking before the storm that was her manager. How could they not know a stalker was wandering around an actress's home? He was insistent on raising help, but Goon didn't want to. She asked the guard to be more aware of outsiders before sending him off. Her manager is raising that he strengthened security as the guard ran off. He was insistent on making a complaint to the company, but Goon didn't want him to overreact to that extent. He was probably just another excessive fan. Happened every once in a while. She assured him he would be fine and security was going to be strengthened. She promised she would be fine, sending him off as she walked into the complex. He looked on, wondering if she really would be. She had pulled a bravado with her manager, but in truth, she was a little anxious. As the elevator opened, she hoped there wouldn't be any more envelopes. And there weren't. She got as far as her door before she felt a hand on her shoulder, causing her to fall, screaming in fear. But it was only Bomin. She was more shaken up than he would have expected, which worried him slightly. Recovering, she asked why he was there, but he refused to give her a straight answer, asking her to guess. Oga, not today. She dusted herself up, telling him it was rude to visit another person so late and unannounced, whatever his reason was. And he agreed. Ideally, that would be a rude thing to do. But he hadn't come to see her, per se. He happened to move in right across from her. They were going to be seeing each other a lot more often. In that moment, she recalled a distant memory of when they were much younger. It was a rainy night and they stood on the terrace talking. She had told him that everything feels different at first, so he shouldn't just brush off that first time. Hmm, are we talking the deed or something else now? Now back to the present, Bumi cornered her to the wall, asking if she wasn't even the least bit curious about what stepping into his world was like. Remembering the look in his eyes that night, she pushed him away firmly stating she had no intention of stepping into his domain, ever, leaving Bumi alone in the hall. What did you do, Bumi? What did you do? Later at a hotel, Bumi came down from a car hand in hand with his next scandal mate. Walking up to the counter, he asked for his usual room. You don't have shower so tea, you get regular room. Well done. As he headed upstairs with his date, the folks at the counter talked. Apparently, his date was a granddaughter to the chairman of the hotel they just entered. A for audacity. Can't be too hard to get away with anything with a face like that. Up in the room, Bumi and the young babes began the journey to ultimate pleasure. He looks uninterested, not gonna lie. Laying beneath the sex god she was expecting the time of her life, was interrupted by Bumi receiving a call. He was about to take the call, but she pulled him in. Not now, baby, it's just getting good. But unfortunately, his manager wouldn't stop calling. Annoyed, he withdrew from her and picked the call, berating him for calling him during off hours against the agreements they had. But he hadn't had a choice. That night was the congratulatory dinner for the BFF special, and he had mentioned it to Bumi a number of times. Since Bumi wasn't picking his calls, he should have surmised he wasn't going to be attending. The manager added that even Gong was going and he really wanted to see her. But if Bumi didn't go, then he had no reason to go either. But he had already said the magic words. Hearing Gong was going picked his interest. Apparently, she was treating everyone because the first episode had been a hit. He recalled the incident from before and her insistence on not stepping into his domain. And just like that, he made up his mind. He picked up his shoes, ready to leave. The woman that had been under him minutes ago questioned what he was doing. He could have just said he had work to do. But tell me why he looked her dead in the eyes and said he wasn't attracted to her after all. I feel your pain too, honey. I feel your pain. He got into his car, certain that he would be attending the dinner, much to his manager's surprise, asking him to text him the address before hanging off. He smiled in anticipation of the night ahead. At the dinner, where everyone was already seated and enjoying, Bumi cast the stare as he walked through the hall straight for the table where Goon was, her back to him. Upon hearing them call out his name, she turned to him, looking fine, if I say so myself, and he greeted her with a smile too enthusiastic for the current situation. 
Now that Bumi was here, the producer raised the toast to the success of their first episode. His manager sat beside him, impressed that he actually came. He wondered why he changed his usually stoic mind, and Bumi is stealing a glance at Goon, who was with her manager and spotted him but immediately looked away with distaste, smiled. There was no reason, he said, as he continued to steal glances through the night from the no reason. No reason, but you left a perfectly nice lay in bed to come and drink beer with someone that is ignoring you. Well done, sir. Later, Bumi woke up from a nap to his longtime friend, Lim Hyo Jung, calling out to him, but her voice faded into the background. He had had the weirdest, most random dream ever. Not so random, if you ask me. He had been laying in bed when he had felt something touch him and then felt someone reach out to him. Like someone with military training, he reached out on instinct to grab the intruder when to be met with Goon. Shocked, he immediately let go of her hand, confused as to what was happening. To be honest, she'd have figured out it was a dream at this point, because from where? She shushed him before gently laying him down as she got on top of him, then reaching for his hand to caress her face, her eyes seductively staring deep into his soul or conscience. Not being able to take it anymore, he flipped her over. Yes, daddy. She had to be messing with him, but as she called out his name, all he could focus on was her lips that called his name so seductively. At least he was trying to before his friend woke him up. He was neither particularly happy nor happy to see her. His nonchalance did not go unnoticed. While she lamented his lack of enthusiasm, after not seeing her for a couple of months, he couldn't get the dream out of his head. Just where the hell had that come from? Are you not the one that has been pushing her buttons? Now you have gone and pushed your own two in the process. He was frustrated and she was oblivious to his plight. Offering to go on a date with him as medicine for whatever was frustrating him, he thought or pretended to think about it for a moment before deciding a date with her was more trouble than it was worth. As he adjusted his appearance in the mirror, she chatted on in excitement that they were having a shit together again. Their last one had been quite a long time ago. But her chattering was only adding to his headache and he bluntly told her that. His temper didn't stop him from looking attractive as hell though. Ah, she's also under the spell. Referencing his numerous scandal, she walked up to him confirming he was indeed not serious about any of them. He definitely noticed the desperate look in her eyes and ignored it, but felt no need to lie. He, after all, wasn't serious with any of them. His confirmation brought her immense joy, telling herself, as I'm sure she often does, that no matter how much he played out there in the end, he would still be hers. The Lulu is not the Sululu in this situation, my dear. They were summoned to the fitting room and they walked, her hand still wrapped around his as folks stared in amazement. He did ask her to let go of his hand, but didn't push when she refused. She asked why he was doing the BFF special going instead of her. Maybe because he don't want to, and they didn't request for you anyway, miss. And as she asked from the corner of their eyes, they spotted going behind the service door with a man. A man she was comfortable enough to touch and comfortably hug. Q extremely shocked Bumi. Why? You can take serious granddaughter to the hotel and walk hand in hand with this one, but she can't hug a man? Why? And that brings us to the end of this recap. This was particularly fun to do. I generally don't subscribe to bad boys, um, but there's just something about Bumi that is just... <clears throat> I hope you understand. Anyways, if you like the recap, please do not forget to subscribe and like, you know, if you're up to it. Uh, otherwise, I shall see you in the next episode because I am going to be here regardless. Love you guys. Uh, thank you.